Welcome to Western Reserve News, and you're watching the highlights of meetings that we're doing this week. Now, if you like what we're doing, we appreciate your comments. Just click on the contact button and tell us what you think. Thank you very much, and we hope you enjoy this week's meetings. So far this week, Western Reserve News has been at Perry Township and at the Sebring Village Council meeting on Monday. On Tuesday, Western Reserve News was at Lexington Township over north of Alliance. And on Wednesday, Western Reserve News was at Salem Township. Guess where? Salem, Ohio, Salem Township. Western Reserve News was at Salem Township on Wednesday. How's things going in Salem Township? Everything's moving along really well. I think we're real happy with the way uh, Sheila Road's coming. Yep. Wrong signposts, but okay. All right. The only thing I have on the unfinished business, I checked on our signposts and we got them yesterday. 110 of them. And you should have the, I left the receipt in the garage. They called me because nobody was here at 3 o'clock. They're the wrong and I, posts. But They're the wrong posts. That's what they ordered on me. I, I called them after that and they said, sorry, that's all we had. So we either take them or not. Well, we'll take them. Western Reserve News was at Lexington Township Tuesday evening, and so was Paul Dent of 1325 Beeson. And Paul was there to complain about being woke up in the morning by the neighbor's rooster. I'm Paul Dent. Uh, I live on 1325 Beeson Street. And uh, I have a situation with my neighbors where uh, their septic system is uh, leaching into my backyard, which ruined my backyard. Uh, caused my septic system to go bad, and um, theirs is still coming into my backyard. I had mine fixed. Mine goes out to the front ditch, and uh, my backyard is completely ruined. Uh, I spent almost nine thousand dollars on my septic system. And it's not only affecting me; it's affecting my other two neighbors behind me here. Uh, the smell, the stank. Uh, I know. That the, the health department, they've been noted, they've been advised about it. They're, they had the scientific, scientific people come out and take another sample of the dirt. Uh, they do have it lined up to get it fixed. But my issue is, since they ruined my backyard, that they be liable. You know, since my backyard is ruined, I had to mow my grass in my boots and up to my ankles in mud. I was wondering if the liability would cover my backyard to get it fixed because it's still coming in. I have pictures right here. And another issue, my main thing is to get my backyard fixed and stuff. But uh, my neighbors east of me, they have chickens, uh, ducks, guinea hens, and uh, they're loose all the time. They're coming into our yards. We have to chase them off. And actually the chickens were coming in onto my property and dusting themselves right beside my house and my air conditioning units right there. And um, I was telling Jim, Jim came up my house and seen it. Um, yeah, at 5 o'clock in the morning, I got a rooster outside my, win outside my window crowing. 5 o'clock in the morning, and I get up, and I go into the spare bedroom, and I look out, and I see him, and then two other chickens take off. 5 o'clock in the morning, we're still sleeping. And it's just a nuisance. And they're always getting loose, coming over. We had to have them come over last Sunday to get the two guinea hens, chase, you know, get them chased back over there. Uh, they're going into his yards as well. And like I said, the septic, I got pictures right here if you guys want to see them. Yeah, we'll take sure. Okay. Yeah. This is. Um, you, you say you have talked to them about their birds coming over and then yeah. Over and yeah, and he said, I, he goes, yeah, I'm trying to. Yeah. yeah. I said, you know, is there any way you can contain these chickens? He goes, I don't know where they're coming out, but they're constantly running loose. This right here is my backyard right here. That's the stuff coming into my backyard. This is one part of it right there, too. 
a backyard ground. And Paul Dent's neighbors were there saying that they had his problems too. I'm Mike Yost. I live on Joy Street, the first house. My property butts up against grosses. Okay. And it is reaching into my property too. Yeah, I'm just trying to support him. It is coming into my property. I've had chickens in my yard, in my front yard. Go to my garage. You know. And it is a nuisance. It is. They yak all day long. You can't shut them up. And I don't even think they're. I've been there for 24 years, and I don't even think them outbuildings are documented under plots. I really don't. At the Monday Perry Township meeting, the Perry Police Chief says he needs to put out the help wanted sign. I would like in September to start a process of taking applications for a part timer, and somewhere in October, November, try to get one hired to replace Corey that I didn't hire and replace last year. I let it ride through the winter and most of the summer now. I'd like to get one more and put us to four part timers. In their final comments, Perry Township trustees express appreciation to the Columbiana County Commissioners for a $50,000 matching fund grant to build a heavy equipment storage building. I'd like to thank the uh, Columbiana County Commissioners and, uh, and the County, County uh, Development for uh, awarding us the uh, $50,000 Second that, and I'd also like to thank the County Engineer's Office for the, I think they did a very fine job with our chip and seal program this year. To start off the Sebring Village Council meeting on Monday was the swearing-in of Nicholas Coe as firefighter EMT. Then Daniel Patterson was sworn in as a paramedic. So if you would raise your right hand, search your name appropriately. The Sebring Village Manager's Report touches on a handgun buyback program. Uh, just a little extra info uh, based on what um, Councilman Hart brought up regarding the Glocks. Um, 
Police Chief uh, is taking advantage of the Glock buyback program. Uh, it's purchasing 13 new Glock handguns um, for a total of $13,000 or $1,390. If we would have bought these firearms individually without the buyback program, it probably cost about nine grand. So um, it's certainly a huge savings. Includes uh, three magazines, uh, night sights, and the Chief has opted to go with 9 millimeter instead of 40 caliber, which we're currently using. So um, I bought the uh, Chief. And the village manager asks council what they want to do about a Smith Township Sebring fire contract. Uh, one thing I am looking for, and it was mentioned in one of my earlier reports, is I'm seeking gu guidance from council regarding the uh, Smith Township fire contract. Uh, as you may have read in the paper earlier, um, uh, Smith Township has some uh, concerns about cost. They were interested in renegotiating the contract. Um, Mayor and I met informally with uh, Mr. Freer, the Township Trustees. Um, Mr. Freer was asking what we exactly could we do. I said, well, I'm going to have to run that past council. Um, I also met with uh, Mr. Freer again. And he wants to consider that. So I'm not sure what council's pleasure is on negotiating or even looking at the fire contract. That's something that I would like to discuss in executive session on the parameters of what you want to do with that. So I don't know if you want to do that tonight or another session. So anyway, I leave that up to you. Um, from what I understand, having talked to Mr. Freer uh, previously, is apparently Smith Township has designated him the primary negotiator. So Mr. Freer is the person we'll be talking to. Your, uh, on that. Next is an update on tree replacement in the village of Sebring. Councilman Wright and I took a tour of the downtown to inspect uh, decorative trees with uh, Ryan Smith of Enviroscapes. Um, after considering the options, uh, we decided to replace 31 trees. Those are the ones that are graded and caged downtown. Um, all the trees that are downtown that are not constricted by any of that, are, we're going to leave those as they are. Um, th this uh, project would inc include uh, the tree and stump removal. We're looking at about $31,000, however, um, uh, we feel that uh, this probably could be negotiated down a bit. Um, we also solicited some other companies. Um, one of the uh, companies was Dan Yoho from Davy Tree uh, to go over the uh, same proposal, and um, he's going to be providing us a quote as well. Councilman uh, Wright did indicate to me that he met again with uh, Ryan from Obiros Caves out of Louisville. Um, they took a drive uh, down at Giant Eagle to take a look at some other trees. One of the things there were trees they were looking for was an ivory silk lilac. I don't know if I sent council pictures of that or not. Anyway, the uh, preliminary estimate on that would be $695 a tree, which would be about $21,545 total. Councilman Wright was going to see if um, they threw in a two year maintenance program which would include fertilizer and light printing. So um, with the council itself, we're going to continue to work at and maybe come with a uh, more definitive contract once we get uh, numbers of the like. And of course, the, the tree types. 